Are y'all guess where I'm going? That's right, Utah. I, I'm just I'm just messing. I am going to Montreal. I'm going to Montreal for uh, a few days with my partner and her son. We're going for the Canadian National Barista Championship. Yes, that's a thing. Most of the time we'll be at the competition itself or trying to figure out how to make a seven-year-old have fun in March in Montreal. But I plan to scoot out every day and take a little bit of time to photograph the city. And street photography is something that I love doing. It's something that really deeply informed my style as a portrait photographer and events photographer. And I just, unfortunately, I don't really get the chance to do it super often because I don't live in a place that's super conducive to it anymore. You know, when I used to live in Toronto, it was very easy for me to go out every day with my camera and snap photos. Now it's, it's a lot more difficult to get that in my daily practice. So when I travel, I make sure I do whatever I can to get out each day and take photographs. Travel for me is not always just about photography. Most of the time it's me and my partner going to have fun somewhere. And I don't want to take up the entire day just going out taking photos because that's not fun for us. It's fun for me, but it's not fun for us. And especially having a seven-year-old, you know, it's it's not the most interesting thing to be like, you go stand over there in that area while I stand on this corner for 45 minutes to try and get a couple photos. But what I like to do is to try and photograph the city, get a sense of it. And usually all of that ends up on one of my Instagram profiles. I'll put the link down below where I do these kind of like Insta zine things. They're super fun. I love doing them. They're creative and interesting, and it's a great way to get to know the city. So today I just want to talk about some of the gear I'm going to be bringing with me, how I choose my settings, my sort of philosophy with street photography, and a few tips that I think are helpful if you're jumping out there, getting into street photography for the first time, you want to dabble in it, whatever. So as far as gear goes, I really, really like to limit myself in terms of what I bring with me. I go with as minimal a setup as possible, and I do that for a few reasons. Firstly, I, I just, I don't want things to get stolen. I don't want things to get lost. When you're traveling and you're moving around, it's really easy for that to happen. If I'm not doing paid work where I specifically need a certain camera or you know extra lenses, audio gear, lighting, all that stuff, I'm not going to bring any of it with me. I'm going to bring a bare bones setup to get what I need. Um, and that, that's the other thing is I just I really like to travel small and light. And I think having this just be like a personal trip, I can I can do that. The other thing is that I think limitations really help when it comes to street photography. If I have one camera and one lens, I know that that is going to be the limitation that I have to deal with and I'm going to have to work around that and work harder to make sure I get the kind of shots I want and I think it it sort of adds a little bit of like flexibility to your brain a little bit and it makes you work a little harder so that you grow as a photographer. So I'll be traveling with Old Faithful, Canon 5D Mark II and the 50mm f1.8. It's a tiny little setup, not as small as it can get but it is a pretty minimal basic setup, awesome battery life, really easy to work with, it's a bomb proof camera if I lose it. It's not the end of the world. I could replace it fairly easily. Is this the best camera I own? No. Is it the best camera for street photography? No. But will it get the job done? 100%. I also really want to see what it'll be like to take these photos and run them through the Dehancer iOS app. You know, my last video was all about Dehancer and I'd really like to make a video where I'm exploring some of these images and, and how the raw files from Canon and their older cameras can work with the new Dehancer to give you that kind of cool filmic look that I think a sensor like the 5D Mark II really plays into nicely. Okay, on to how I'll be shooting and my settings and my, my plans. Basically, street photography is quick. It, things happen fast, you have to react quickly. Uh, depending on what you're doing, if you're doing like street photography in terms of like architecture or more still life stuff, you have time. But for the stuff I do that's usually involving people in the frame, it, it does happen pretty quickly. So I have to be able to move you know, laterally and flexibly and, and make it all happen as fast as I can. So I try and keep my settings pretty basic and pretty straightforward, knowing that I will be able to do what I have to do with those settings. A few of the things that I do. First of all, I make sure I really know what my settings are at any given point. So that means shooting in full manual and having all my settings exactly where I want them and making sure that the big thing that I'm changing is going to be ISO. And the reason for that is because I know more or less that I want to be at a fixed aperture somewhere between like 5.6 to 8 for my street photography because I like to get that depth so you can actually see what's going on in a scene. So I'm not really shooting at like a super fast aperture usually unless it's nighttime and I really need that extra light and that kind of thing. I'm usually using a, a, a longer depth of field, right? The, the problem with the 5D Mark II is that if I were to go into like aperture priority, for example, you can't automatically set the shutter speed to be like at a minimum of a certain amount like you can in more modern cameras so it'll go down to a shutter speed of like 30 or 40 or something when i'm trying to capture something that might need a shutter speed of like 125 something like that so 
Uh, I go into full manual rather than aperture priority. And on this, I could in theory set this to an auto ISO, but again, with the 5D Mark II, when you're in manual and you set it to auto ISO, it just defaults to 400 all the way across and it doesn't change. So it's not really useful either. So really I'll just be kind of riding the ISO and, and I know the limits of this camera and where I'm happy with it. And I'll just be trying to kind of deal with that. The second thing is gonna be using focus and recompose. So this camera has a pretty sticky and solid middle focus point, but everything around it, especially with this lens is just not as good. So basically what I need to do is focus and recompose. And that's something people have been doing for ages. And so that's totally fine. So if I'm going to be using autofocus, I'll be doing focus and recompose. Now, when the autofocus doesn't work, that's where I'll be switching over to zone focusing. And I'll probably do zone focusing for a lot of my work, basically setting it to F8, figuring out what my zone of focus is. You can go find other videos on zone focusing unless you wanna hear me rattle on about it, in which case I'll make a video about it. But basically just creating a, a situation where I know that I have a certain depth of field and just doing that. Zone focus is awesome because it's really, really quick. You don't have to worry about whether you're in focus or not. And you can also do things like shooting without having to hold it up to your, to your eye shooting from the hip, just getting quick photos that you might not get otherwise when you're waiting for the autofocus to kind of jump in. Metering mode, I'll be using a mix of sort of an evaluative full metering mode as well as spot metering mode. So I think the spot is really helpful for certain areas in Montreal where I know that there's gonna be a lot of mixed lighting and there's gonna be a lot of like blocks of light uh, because of some of the bigger older buildings there. And I know that I'm going to want to really focus in on my subject. So spot metering based on the center is going to be really helpful. And that's how I'm going to compose a lot of my images. However, other than that, I'll just be using regular, you know, full evaluative metering and blah, blah, blah. An important thing about the settings that you use for street photography, other than maybe like being sure that using the aperture you want, is that I think settings are actually a little bit less important when it comes to street photography versus other types of photography. Like if I'm shooting architecture or if I'm shooting, you know, real estate photography or, or portrait sessions and stuff, my settings are very important because I'm going for a very specific look. However, with street photography, so much of it is about capturing the moment. And I would say the context and content of the photo override perfect settings. So it's pretty rare that a, a street photo gets all of its accolades based on like, oh man, what a great choice of lens or like, what an awesome use of ISO or something like that. People are, are looking at the images and they're connecting with them at a personal level based on what's in them. And so there's a little more flexibility. All right, I said I would talk about like philosophy when it comes to street photography and I could wax poetic about this for a while and I can get weird with it. I think street photography, you, you, I hear so many different weird things about it. Like, oh, it's the purest form of photography or like it is, it is what, photography is meant to be and whatever. I'm not talking about that kind of philosophy. I'm more talking about it from like an ethical perspective. Something about this trip in particular, let's say, and a lot of trips that I take, like I'm going to Montreal and I have no interest in creating like social commentary on Montreal. What I mean is like, I'm a visitor in Montreal and I'm, and I'm there to visit. I'm not there to create super deep, meaningful work about what's going on in Montreal. And that's not my place. I am not a resident of Montreal. I haven't lived there. I haven't invested myself there. And I don't think it would be fair for me to jump in just to sort of like make this weird social commentary after being there for three days. That's not cool. You need to immerse yourself in a place. You need to become a part of a community. You need to have an intention when you're there. And if you don't, then I don't think it's fair to like position yourself in a way where you're like this photographer who's making important work surrounding a place like you don't know the place well enough to do that honestly way too often i see people who are not a part of a particular community making social commentary on that community and i don't think it comes from a genuine place and i don't think it's helpful and the most obvious sort of example of this is photographing unhoused people right if you go to a place and you are seeing a whole bunch of people who are living on the street and you're deciding i'm going to photograph them it feels a little bit like you're just taking from them right you're saying like oh look at these people and they're like look at this is so rough and edgy and intense like look at my work like what i'm really creating something those people don't know you they don't care about you and you're not doing anything to help I'm not saying social commentary through photography is not important. It's incredibly important. However, I don't think that it's always your place to do it just because you happen to see something happening. Now, 
don't get me wrong. If you're in a place and a monumental historical event is happening around you and you're going to photograph it, of course, do it, do it. But just making sure that you're not like going around, like hunting out people that look like they're having a rough time just so you can get those badass photos. Like that's gross. It's not cool. All right. We're going to bring this home with just a few tips about street photography when you're getting started, or if you haven't done it for a while or anything like that. Here's a few things that I find really, really help when I'm out shooting. Firstly, just smile. Smiling makes people chill out. If you snap a photo and someone catches you doing it and you, <laughs> you smile at them and you just seem like you're like, oh, I'm just taking a photo. People put their guard down a lot more, not all the time, but more. And that's helpful. So smile. It's an easy free thing to do and it makes you feel better. It makes them feel better and it, it chills out the process. Tip number two, learn to zone focus. Uh, it just makes it easier and faster to get certain photos. You don't always have to zone focus. And if you have a quick camera, you know, like a modern mirrorless camera, it's going to do a really good job overall. But I still think having that ability to zone focus is really helpful, especially when you jump into like low light situations or if you are wanting to use some like vintage glass or whatever, just learn to zone focus. It's a skill that you should have as a photographer and it's one that we can always get better at. Number three, figure out your settings and don't stress after that. I see this really often where people get like so caught up in what's going on in their camera that they miss shots. Figure out settings that work for street photography for what you like to do. So for me, it means that I'm gonna be between F 5.6 to F8. I'm gonna be at a shutter speed of like 125 to 250. And I'm gonna let the ISO be dictated by the exposure that I need. Really, really simple. With a camera like the 5D Mark II, I'll be riding the ISO a little bit, so I will have to change some settings, but overall it'll be pretty okay. But once I know my settings, just don't stress. You can fix stuff in post, especially with more modern cameras. You can really fix a lot in post. So like when it comes to exposure itself, if it's not exactly what you want, there's a lot you can do. You can't fix shutter speed or aperture in post. I mean, you can use some lens blur effects and shit like that, but, but overall, like really focus on those things and your exposure doesn't have to matter quite as much as it would in some other photography. Number four, if you feel weird taking a photo, don't take it. Like if you're seeing something and you're like, I don't know if I should be photographing this right now, there's a good chance you shouldn't listen to that feeling and move on. Tip number five. Yes. Street photography is legal in Canada. At least I can take photos of people. And if we're out on the street, that's okay. That's something I'm allowed to do legally. But that doesn't mean it's always right. Um, and it doesn't mean that that's okay in this situation, in the context. This kind of le leads into the last one. But basically, if somebody comes up to you and they've seen that you've taken a photo of them and they're upset, instead of being like, it's my right, I can take this, I'm a photographer and I'm allowed to take these photos, I think it's really simple to just say like, okay, like if I'll, I'll delete it. That photo is probably not worth getting into a fight. You know, sometimes I'll just like show them the picture. I'll be like, look, you look really cool. I just took a photo because you look awesome. Like, this is just for me. I I, guess it, I I promise I won't put it anywhere. If you don't want it online, whatever. I just like this photo. If you really want me to, I can delete it. Usually they'll be fine with it, but if they want you to delete it, delete it. Just It's just a photo. It's just a photo. They're a human being and it's just a photo. Tip number six is to shoot lots and don't delete anything till you have all your images from the trip and you've looked back at them. Because if you're trying to create a narrative around a, a city or something like that, you never know when like a blurry out of focus shot of a hand is going to help build a narrative. So don't automatically delete it because it's not what you want. Bring enough storage, which is pretty cheap these days to get all the photos you want and just shoot away. Tip number seven is a big one. Don't just photograph the back of people's heads. It's really easy when you're first starting out in street photography to get nervous and uncomfortable and to, you know, feel like you're not supposed to be doing what you're doing. It's okay to do what you're doing. And, and touching back on a couple of these last ones, like, yeah, if you feel super uncomfortable because you feel like morally what you're doing is wrong with a particular photo, don't take that photo. If you just feel like, oh, I'm really uncomfortable doing street photography, you should probably be going out and doing it to get more comfortable. Sometimes photos of the back of people's heads can be really fun and, and that kind of thing. But like, if you're never seeing a face in your photography, that can be a style, that can be a look. But if you're doing it just because you're uncomfortable, like just, you got to get over that. You got to get out of your comfort zone and start taking photographs of people. Take the photo, smile at them, offer to delete it, move on. That's it. That's it. It's very simple. So I'll be sharing all these images from the trip on my social media. And uh, I look forward to hearing what you have to say. You can follow me down below. And then I'll be using all these images as well to create a new video about the Dehancer iOS app that I'm, I'm actually pretty stoked on. If you saw my last video on Dehancer, you'll know that like I thought it was a pretty interesting thing and I'm really looking forward to seeing what 
it can do moving forward for my like social media stuff, especially because I find oftentimes I don't post to social media because I just, I find that the workflow annoying to do it with what I do, but I think something like the Dehancer iOS app can kind of fix that. So looking forward to it. Okay. Thank you so much. Get out there, shoot. Let me know what you think about street photography. Are you a street photographer? Are you uh, looking into street photography? Do you like the 5D Mark II for street photography? Do you think Montreal is cool? Do you think I should wear a different hat? I don't know, just say whatever you want. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Peace. Thank you.